Hey guys, so I am in the process of installing a ton of Docker containers. And what it's gotten me to realize is that basically when I go through and install a Docker container, it's kind of hit or miss on if it's actually gonna stick with me. And when I say that, I mean that I implement something, I start to use it, I get really excited, I use it for like a week or two, and then what ends up happening is over time, some of these Docker containers end up being things that I don't actually go back to. So in this video, I wanna show you four of the Docker containers that I can tell you I use every single day. Now, these are not the best Docker containers you can use, and my goal in basically installing all of these new Docker containers is to try and figure out exactly which ones are best for me. So maybe in the future, I will create a video like that. But for right now, the goal is to really just highlight the ones that I am currently using on a daily basis that the second they go down, it's a problem for me. So we're gonna jump right into it. And the very first one is my dashboard. Now, quite honestly, it doesn't matter which dashboard you use. I use Homar, and I have a video on that if you're interested in seeing it. But the reason I like this one is mainly just for ease of use. It allows you to basically go in and just drag and drop, and that's what I like the most. Because what I found from prior dashboards was that I wasn't really going in and actually modifying them anytime something came on because I had to modify a configuration file. With Homar, I don't have to do that. So this is something that is actually somewhat up to date. Now it's in a little bit of disarray because I'm in the process of basically upgrading my home lab, which I'll have future videos on, and a lot is changing. But regardless, these are the services and the systems that I use on a daily basis. And without this dashboard, I can't get to any of it. The second it doesn't load, I immediately go and try and fix it. So the dashboard is number one. Now the second one, which kind of plays into the dashboard, is Nginx Proxy Manager, but it's not the way that you traditionally would think of a reverse proxy. So what you can see here is the URL I'm using plus an SSL certificate, and that's done through Nginx Proxy Manager. So I have a video on this as well, but in essence, I am only using this for local DNS. So I have DNS records for basically all of these, and all they do is point to this Nginx Proxy Manager server. But at that point, I went through and I got Let's Encrypt certificates that are renewed through DNS so I don't have to open any ports. But then I'd basically just go in and create a new proxy host. And inside of it, this is a container I'm currently testing, but inside of it, I would just point to the IP address, the local IP address, give it the name I wanna use, and then select that SSL certificate. And then at that point, every single one of these services that I have here open up by domain name and they have a valid SSL certificate. So at that point, I don't really have to remember any IP addresses, though generally you feel like you end up doing that. But I don't have to remember any of those. And then I have all of my services that are accessible through domain name with a valid SSL certificate, which is extremely helpful. Now, the next is for uptime monitoring, and I'm in the process of trying to figure out a full monitoring solution for my entire home lab. But overall, the actual uptime Kuma that you're seeing right here, this has been in place for over a year at this point. Um, this is something that I check regularly, and I do have notifications configured on here. So overall, I don't really have to come here because if anything actually goes down, I'll get a notification, which we will get to in a second here. But I'll get a notification, but that's not why I check this. I check this because on a lot of these services, I have the retry set to be higher than one. So on some of them, I say that if it goes down at any point, notify me immediately for things like my network and stuff like that, because if any of that's down, there's a problem. But for like my website, there are times where it might report as being down, but it's not actually down. So I go in and I set this retries to ensure that it retries five times in a row, which is set at every 20 seconds. So it would retry for 100 total seconds. And if it's down after that, it will notify me. I basically just come in here and check to make sure everything's green. If everything's green, we're good. But it's something that I check at least once a day and Paired with notifications, as soon as I get a notification that something's down, the very first thing I do is come here to just basically check on everything. Now, the next thing I use, I use every single day, and this is the most used application, which we'll get to in a second in terms of why, but it's called 
NTFY, I call it notify. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but this is what I use for all of my notifications. So I'm in the process of kind of migrating everything over to this and it interfaces with a lot of different applications. So you can kind of configure things very easily, Uptime Kuma being a good example for that. But the very first one is gonna be Uptime Alerts. I use this for all of my Uptime Alerts. Anytime anything goes down, depending on that retries, which we just talked about, I will get a notification to my phone. One thing with this application is that I feel like the iPhone application might have some issues with notifications. I was reading that, but I have Android, it works great. Now this is the reason why this is the most used application that I have. I use it for motion notifications. Now what I use as my NVR is Blue Iris and Blue Iris is super powerful, but it has to kind of be customized. So what I have Blue Iris doing is Blue Iris has AI alerts from Code Project AI. If you've never used Blue Iris, this isn't gonna make any sense. The important part is that it takes a motion event and it basically runs it through an AI processor and it will spit that back to Blue Iris so it knows what to do with it. Now, technically, Code Project AI is something I use every day as well for this reason, but that's separate. Those motion notifications don't actually do anything if you're not notified for them. So what I have is inside of Blue Iris, I have a alert that will basically get sent directly to notify with all of the details of that motion notification. So it'll say the actual camera that it came from. It will say what the AI detected. So you can see for this one, it detected a person and in specific, it detected me. And then I have two links down here, one that goes to the live view of that camera and one that goes to the pre-recorded clip of that camera. And then in here, which is blacked out currently, is the actual image that went with that motion notification. I use this all day, every day. I used to have this set up in Home Assistant, but what I didn't like about Home Assistant is that you had to actually send it through an MQTT server. So basically it went from Blue Iris to the MQTT server, then to Home Assistant. So it was a little delayed. This is probably about one or two seconds faster per motion notification. So it's not tremendously faster, but it is faster than it was. And what I like the most about this is you could set the total number of notifications that you wanna retain. So it used to be with my notifications that I had to go to Blue Iris and see exactly what those alerts were if I was going back to different alerts to try to find out what happened. At this point, I could do it directly from Notify. Not only that, but it actually retains them all. So this is the application I could say is online all the time. And total tertiary benefit is that it has browser-based notifications. So I used to get notifications only to my phone and I still get them to my phone, but I could actually configure the device I'm on to also send those motion notifications. So if somebody's outside of my house, I get a notification on my PC as well as my phone and I'm happy. Now again, there are a lot more Docker containers out there, a lot more that I've used, a lot more that I plan on using, but these are the ones that have stuck with me basically since I started using them. There's a lot more out there, a lot more that I'm kind of diving into to try to find ones that I can continue to implement into my personal life. But I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear what you're currently using, what you think I should be using, and if there's anything that I can use that could potentially benefit me. So if you made it this far, Thank you very much for watching. Again, these are not the best Docker containers. I'm fully aware of that, but hopefully you got some value out of it. Again, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time.